So thanks, sir. thanks for giving the time, ma'am. Today we will discuss about the scale development. One of the most important issue in the research is the scale development. There are number of scholars who believe that we should take a standardized scale, but large number of scholars they feel that we should make a scale. And in that, what they do, they make a scale in just a two day, three day, or common thing is just take the data from here and there from certain constructs, and then add up, and it becomes a scale. I have seen uh, you publish a wonderful paper in uh, a cat a star category journal on the scale development. So we will feel really privileged if you can guide us about the process and when to use and all nuances related to that. Thank you. Sir, thank you very much for giving me this chance to share my views and my experience on writing a paper on scale validation. So you have rightly said, sir, it is not that easy to write a paper or to think about the scale development and validation. It's a rigorous procedure, actually. And uh, my suggestion to the scholars is that, you know, if you are borrowing the items, if you are adapting the items from the previous literature, then you need not to go for scale validation. So the next question in this regard comes that, you know, then how to take a decision that when to go for scale validation, scale development and scale validation, basically. So in that case, scholars, they can keep in mind, if suppose a concept is such which has been defined, theoretically it has been defined, but there is no such scale which is available or which means that you know nobody has actually developed the items items with regard to that scale that concept those items are not available in that case yes that is the best opportunity for the scholar to develop a scale to measure a scale and finally to validate that scale but if the items are available then i would request the scholars that they should not go for the scale development because then you would find, even if your context is different, slight rewording of the items can be suggested in that case. But if you would say that, you know, altogether developing a new scale, that is not recommended because then you are going to face a problem when you would send your paper for publication in the quality journals. Because they were, the very first question would be that why your scale should be accepted or why you have not accepted the well-established scales which are there. So one is a situation where the items are not available. In that case, that is the best. And I would suggest that in that case, first you go for a qualitative study so that you, know, you are able to develop the items and then you go for quantification. That is the measurement of the items, how to measure those items. And finally, when you have collected the data, then you go for the scale validation. So that is the best procedure to follow. But what I have seen is that, you know, most of the cases when I'm reviewing the papers also written by the Indian authors and also nowadays, you know, the thesis also which I am evaluating. So I've seen this is a common mistake which is being committed by the scholars that they perform EFA first. So EFA means that, you know, you are going for the scale development and then the measurement and then you are applying the EFA. So uh, my humble ambition here is to all the scholars is that, you know, even if you are adding few items to the existing scale, still you should not go for EFA. So now what would determine that, you know, whether you should go for the scale development or not? So the best way is if scale is not available, you should be the first one to develop that scale. That is the best opportunity for you. If you feel that a scale was developed, but 10, 12 or 20 years back, now you feel that, you know, the dimensionality of that scale might change. In that case, yes, you can go for it because keeping in mind the span of the period, you know, 10, 20 years of it, because things change very drastically. Now also, you know, after COVID also, so we can expect many changes to take place, even in the consumer behavior also, the employee's attitude also. So in that case, yes, you can always look into it. The, then you can think of, you know, developing a scale with the refined items. But if you feel that, you know, you, you are borrowing all the items and still you want that, you know, you need to go for the scale development, that is not the best approach to follow. So in that case, you should simply go for the validation of those items. You should not go for development and the measurement. So, I mean, validation would be the best uh, step to follow in that case after measure, measuring your items. So this is the thing, you know, so now in this 
in this paper i would share with you that sir it is uh, it is not an easy job first of all to write a paper on scale development and the most difficult part is to get its acceptance to find a place for such type of uh, manuscripts it's very difficult because you know the amount of rigor which the the editors and the reviewers they expect so you need to fulfill their expectations because you know when you talk about a skill development which means that you know for at least for 10 years your skill would be it would be uh, you know cited by most of the scholars now this paper so which is uh, on throughput orientation so because there was no such scale available when we developed this scale so we started this procedure in 2015 and yes um, so 2015 we started with the i mean just to because we started contacting the people also there was no such item available on throughput orientation so throughput orientation is the operationalization of theory of constraints theory of constraints is an operations management techniques so uh, because um, one of the authors he is almost a propound, i mean he is a strong advocate for this theory of constraints so his uh, work is actually basically he has a strong publications in this area on theory of constraints so he only suggested that you know we should develop a scale because there is no such scale available so this motivation or the conviction for us to start writing on this paper was you know that there is no such scale available so we should at least and catch we should leverage this opportunity and we should not i mean we should be able to because of uh, professor mahesh gupta that we we thought that you know because you know thing is that one should be very strong in the conceptual understanding of that particular concept before you think about the scale development so that is required so in, in our case in our team it was professor mahesh gupta because of his you know years of experience uh, writing case studies and various other empirical work also on um, theory of constraints so that that because that only gave us the motivation that you know we can write a paper on scale development on measurement and the on the validation of throughput orientation so now uh, initially normally if you would talk about any other scale development quite possible a scholar may not have an idea or a clue also that's why i suggested that they should go for a qualitative study why why because you know you do not know the dimensions which would appear we do not know how many components would finally occur in that case because we have no such clue so but in our case fortunately it was professor mahesh gupta he knew about it that throughput orientation which we intend to develop has three dimensions it has broader broader three dimensions under it one is the mindset second is the measurement and third is the methodology because of his understanding of theory of constraint so we initially we started with these three and then we started developing the items with regard to mindset measurements and methodology so uh, shall i share my paper sir uh, ma'am before that i have a couple of questions these yes, questions yes, uh, must be coming in the mind of young scholars the first thing ma'am yes, we there is not a particular website or place where we can see all all the old skills like everybody say the, the scale is there then we find we don't get it then maybe somewhere else so is there any repository etc where we can find these skills uh, uh i would suggest one thing sir in this case that it is always better to go for you know the the scan of the literature or the papers either in the scopus or i'm um, basically in the scopus if you would search the papers like if suppose that you want to know about any concept if you if i have to talk about the customer incivility if i talk about so i say as of now there is no well established scale on customer incivility or to that matter if i have to talk about the employees mindfulness so to for this also i say to date not so good established scale exist to measure to capture the mindfulness of the employees in that case what a scholar has to do is uh, what i mean because your your question i know your question is different but i'm starting from this that you know what a scholar can do it scholars should download all the papers related to mindfulness now because you know if you would download every paper related to mindfulness you would be confident first of all that there is no such paper 
on scale validation or the scale development of mindfulness. Mindfulness might have been considered as one of the constructs in the study with few items. But when you would talk about the dimensions or the dimensionality of the mindfulness, you may not come across any paper. And for that, how a, how a student or a scholar would get that, I mean, to gain that confidence, first of all, you should be, you should be able to convey that, you know, that after going through all these papers on the mindfulness, I could not find that where this mindfulness scale has been developed. So one thing is that, you know, you, you as, as a scholar also, so you, that's why I said that, you know, Professor Mahesh Gupta was there to assure us that there is no such scale on throughput orientation. As, because a lot many papers were published on theory of constraints at that time when we developed this scale. But fortunately, you know, there was no scale development. That's right. one thing. Second thing is, if you are looking for some such, you know, some uh, repository where you can find all these scales, um, you, I think you are the best source to supply this information because in my case, normally what I do is I try to scan the literature only because, you know, like um, the other two papers also, which, which I have written on scale validation, scale development validation, those are on internal market orientation. I'll talk about that also. I'll just talk for one minute only. So in that case also, sir, the scale was available. Scale on internal market, this is in a different uh, context I'm talking about, scale on internal market orientation was already in existence that time. It was by the links in Greenlay, but it was in the retailing sector. It was in the retail sector. Now, in my case, it was the banking sector where I want to test the internal market orientation. That was one context. Second context was the non-profit making organization. That was the second context. So now I found that, you know, that uh, the retail context as compared to the banking context, you know, maybe those items, it is not only the rewording of those items were required in my case, but, you know, I needed, I, I was asked to put more items to it. So I added, you know, many items to the existing scale of links and grain day. In case of non-profit making organization, because retail context is for profit making, this was non-profit making. So it was altogether a new scale, which we developed in case of, you know, internal market orientation, despite the fact that the scale was already there. It was there, but still we developed the items for banking sector in the Indian context and for the non-profit making organization in the Indian context. But sir, when you talk about the, uh, do we have, uh, I suppose that once we have shared a book also where uh, I could find that large number of scales are available. And uh, I think you can comment upon it that, you know, where to get yes, uh, the scales. Yes, ma'am, a couple of books are there. Like there is a sales handbook of marketing scales. Likewise, says handbook on number of uh, different HRM skills, etc. Ma'am, I have three more questions, uh, follow-up question in this regard. My first question is, like you rightly said, we should start with the papers, earlier papers, maybe the seminal papers, etc. on that topic. The other problem comes, there is a more than one scale. In that case, uh, how we should select a scale, ma'am? There is one? Sorry. More than one scale on the same topic. On the same construct, there is more than one scale. If it is there, then how should we select any one of them? Okay, okay, okay. There are, when there are multiple scales? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. So I'll quote here, like, sir, uh, in 1992 papers, uh, in general of marketing, two papers were published. One was, unfortunately, uh, I think in that same year only, in different volumes. One was by Kohli and Jawarski. I'm talking about market orientation scale. Then quite often I, you know, because my research work was on market orientation. So one was published by Kohli and Jawarski and second was, was published by Narvin Slater. Now Kohli and Jawarski, because it had you know, those three constructs, information generation, information dissemination and responsiveness. So that was more from an intelligence perspective. Whereas uh, Narvin Slater's scale was competitor orientation. It was, you know, interfunctional coordination and it was customer orientation. So these three dimensions, and it was more from the cultural perspective, sir. You can, yes, you, you have rightly said here that you can think of developing a scale, but from a different perspective, sir. You can look at it from a different perspective. So if suppose a scale is there, which is more from the, more from the uh, customer's perspective, 
what you can do there is you can always think of you know developing the skill from an employee's perspective so that would give altogether a different meaning to your skills so that all that can always be done not an issue at all because you know what uh, what needs to be done is you as a scholar you have to establish the novelty how your skill is different from the existing skills so in that case yes because in case of inter internal market orientation also beside links and greenley gnoris uh, is there who has developed a skill so you would find that you know there would not be a repetition and if you would try to replicate it if you would try to replicate it you know in that case nobody is going to nobody is going to publish your paper that is for sure sir yes ma'am so at least so then then one has to keep yeah then it will not be called as a skill development you can say i have yes, used yes, somebody yes. skill that's the case yes sir so that is so that is that is the exercise which you have done but that does not result into a skill development correct correct yes, so that correct. is the case ma'am the second question is like you said in your case you started with the theory of constraint so is it advisable for anyone who is starting a new skill development they should start first with the theory get a construct think of the items in the construct and this way they should start yes sir yes sir this is actually required this is actually the step you know the very first step is you should know about the theory when i say conceptual understanding you know from which theory that concept has actually emerged so you should before going for the skill development you should have a clear understanding from where you know in this concept is grounded in which theory so that that theory you should have a clear understanding of that theory only then you can think of your know you can because there might be a few definitions of that concept and they they might have referred to a particular theory only then you can think of developing a skill for that you know conceptual understanding the theoretical understanding the theory from where this concept has emerged so those theories should be one or two theories you know it might be integration of two theory so those theories should be clear to a scholar then only they can think of developing a skill sir right sir ji thank you ma'am so ma'am though my third question you have already answered but let me again ask it very uh, explicit terms you told that it's perfectly okay to have the same scale measured from the different sectors like somebody made in the retail not necessarily that will work in the education sector or the banking sector there is still the avenues you can make the scale in that is that right ma'am uh so this is correct only thing is a scholar has to take a decision decision in the sense if you are just rewording the items rewording the items of the existing scale then you should not go for scale development but if you are adding considerable items to it like in case of banking what happened because the funds are involved funds are involved in that case you know the cust uh, the customer is more particular about the financial services rather than talking about the retail sector so in case of retail sector that you know that scale when you talk from the banking sector so we had to add more items to it so because we went through each and every item then we found that you know no because the it is not only the sector uh, which matters in this case what matters is how much changes you are incorporating to an existing scale if you feel that you are making very considerable changes in your existing scale in that case yes in that case you can go for a scale development but simply by quoting that you know it was uh, this particular scale was it was you know tested in a retail sector now i want to test in the education sector in the healthcare sector by simply rewording your item so that is not a sufficient justification for, to go for a scale development sir. correct ma'am correct so we have seen the cases like cervical was originally made for banking but then people have changed for the retail changed for the education hospitality other sector travel and then very recently again prashram and jethmal had changed it for uh, online system also e service quality etc so e that's e a perfect e service quality yes sir. so might be a new yes, dimension sir. is added in the different sector that is also possible yes yes 
yes mm. sir yes sir i mean if you feel that the existing scale is not sufficient to capture your objective of your study mm. in that case you know you can you feel that there would be more than if suppose there are three dimensions to a scale you feel that you know there is a possibility that more dimensions might emerge in your case two more dimensions of so in that by based on the number of new items which you have added based on that only if you feel that you, yes in that case you can go for the scale development correct ma'am so let's uh, conclude uh, this uh, first section ma'am by concluding what i understood we should always start with the theory that is the first most thing and then identify a construct and before the scale you must have a sufficient write up of the reasoning why a new scale that is probably more important than the scale itself why a new scale a very strong yes, reason yes. should be there okay so ma'am yes. in the next section we will discuss about your paper and the structure of your paper thank right, you sir. right sir. thank you